The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. You You may be seated. Let us pray. O God, open our ears so that we may hear your voice. Open our minds so that we may receive your wisdom. Open our hearts so that we may know your love and peace. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Today is the last day of the church year. It's a feast day called Christ the King or Reign of Christ Sunday. When we remember that God rules over all things. It was only begun in 1925 by Pope Pius XI, who decreed that this day be celebrated every year as a reminder that God is in charge, that God is the only hope for this world, even as the world was in turmoil. Today, we also can remember that God is making all things new. God is transforming all things, and that includes us. God's kingdom is breaking into the world even today, even as we might sometimes feel like life is spinning out of control. In our gospel text for today, Jesus is telling his disciples what the kingdom of heaven will look like. This text is a continuation of Jesus' parables that we've heard the last two Sundays, the parable of the ten bridesmaids, and the parable of the talents. Today's text is often called the parable of the sheep and the goats. In her book, Short Stories by Jesus, the enigmatic parables of a controversial rabbi, New Testament and Jewish studies professor Amy Jill Levine notes two important things to remember when we read parables. Number one, Each person will hear a distinct message. Number two, these stories challenge us 
to look at our values and our lives, often bringing up questions and showing us truths that we know but don't want to acknowledge. In other words, parables are not just cute, entertaining stories with simple meanings. We are meant to think about them, wrestle with them, see ourselves in them, and learn from them. Jesus tells his disciples that when the Son of Man will come with his angels and sit on his throne of glory, the nations will be gathered around him, and he will judge them. This image likely seems in line with what we would expect a ruler to do, but the next part doesn't. The Son of Man separates the people, like sheep from goats. He says to the sheep that they are blessed by God and will inherit the kingdom prepared for them because they cared for him when he was hungry, thirsty, a stranger, naked, sick, and in prison. The sheep are baffled and ask, when did we do that? The Son of Man tells them that when they cared for the hungry, the thirsty, the stranger, the naked, the sick, and those in prison, they actually cared for him. The Son of Man refers to these people as the least of these, but also as members of his own family. The Son of Man then turns to the goats and tells them, that because they didn't take care of him, that they are accursed and will go to eternal punishment. The goats are also baffled and ask, when did we do that? The Son of Man responds, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. When I use Levine's guidance about reading parables, I see that this parable makes me want to be right and avoid negative consequences. This parable also makes me wonder, when do I ignore my suffering neighbor? When do I judge people and separate them into categories? When do I not see God's face in the face of my neighbor? How do I exclude others from the kingdom of heaven? In this text, we see Jesus' compassion for the poor, the vulnerable, and the marginalized. But Jesus goes a step further and says he is the poor, the vulnerable, and the marginalized. We might think of other people in our society today who are vulnerable and marginalized. We know that in his time, Jesus reached out to those who had little power or status. So we can imagine Jesus also caring about such people in our society today. Our list might include people who use or are addicted to substances, people who are bullied or abused, those living with mental illness, those who identify as LGBTQ+, those who are unhoused, people of color, people who are differently abled or chronically ill, and those who have been incarcerated. I'm sure you can come up with others. In thinking about how God calls us, to reach out to the vulnerable in our own time, I'm reminded of the covenant we make in our baptism. Part of this covenant says that we will serve all people following the example of Jesus and that we will strive for justice and peace in all the earth. A shorter way of saying this is the ELCA tagline that we know well, God's work our hands. The care that Jesus describes in our gospel reading today is personal. It's hands-on and up close. There's no looking away from the need. 
There's no working through a third party. I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. This is ministry of presence, of being with people in their suffering. This is hard, isn't it? Our instinct might well be to distance ourselves. One person who we might say exemplified being with people in their suffering is Mother Teresa. You may recall that she was a Catholic nun who for decades lived in the slums of what is now Calcutta, India, caring for and ministering to the poorest of the poor, those with physical disabilities and the sick. When asked how she was able to care for people in such desperate circumstances, she would respond by holding up her hand and referencing this text. You did it to me. She described her ministry as caring for Jesus in his most distressing disguise. As I was preparing for this sermon, I came across a quote in the most recent newsletter from Living Waters Lutheran Church in Cherokee. Many of you likely know that Grace is in ministry partnership with Living Waters, which compassionately serves its community on the Kuala boundary, providing food, clothing, and other resources. This quote speaks to the importance of hands-on ministry, ministry that is personal. We've got to find ways to get closer to the poor, the neglected, the abused, the ex excluded, the marginalized, because it's in proximity to these communities that we will hear things that we will not otherwise hear. We will see things that we will not otherwise see. There is power when we get proximate, and only then can we have mercy and compassion. We can also see in our gospel reading that God is aware of people's individual lives and struggles, of our individual lives and struggles. God cares about people who are in need, who are vulnerable. God wants us to care about and take care of each other. We also see in this text that God cares that not everyone has enough of what they need to live, and God wants us to change that. In other words, God wants us to strive for justice. God calls us to help bring God's kingdom on earth more fully right here and now. Certainly, this is meaningful and life-giving work, but it can also feel uncomfortable and overwhelming, can't it? The needs are great. It can be hard to be with people who are distressed and desperate. We can look past the opportunities for ministry that exist and feel overwhelmed about all that there is to do. We can look past the abundance that God has given us and that we can share with others and see only scarcity. We might feel uncertain about which way to go and end up feeling stuck and not doing anything. So how can we get past these barriers so that we can follow Jesus and care for our neighbors? Trust. Trust in God. Trust that God is leading us to the work we are to do. Trust that there is enough for all. Trust that there's enough of God's love to work through us to reach others. Trust that there are enough resources, 
enough time, talent, and treasure to do what God is calling us to do. Trust that God can use us, despite our imperfections and our fears, to help bring God's kingdom more fully on earth now. We are not alone in this important work. God is with us, equipping us and working through us. In a short while, we will say together the Lord's Prayer, including these words, Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. What does this familiar sentence look like in our lives? How do you, or could you, care for your vulnerable or marginalized neighbor? How do you, or could you care for your neighbor in a way that is personal, hands-on, up close. I'd love to talk with you about this, to hear what helping to bring God's kingdom more fully on earth now means or could mean in your life or in the life of this congregation. In closing, here are a few words from St. Teresa of Avila that summarize our gospel reading and our calling. Christ has no body but yours, no hands, no feet on earth, but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks with compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Amen. Amen.